Uh, uh, you, if you can hear me. Uh, well, before we go to Mr. Gopalan, let's quickly uh, go to Mr. Jain. Mr. Jain, tell us the tax highlight. Is it the 30% tax on cryptos that we should be focused on? Uh, yes, I believe there have there's been no change in the tax rate for individual companies and others. Uh, the focus in the today's budget, if I see on direct taxes, is only taxing this digital currency. Uh, calling this virtual digital assets at 30 percent with no deduction of any expenditure and the big announcement that rbi will be coming out with digital indian rupee currency so mr jain mr jain mr yeah. jain to make it simple for our audience you've also been the former president of the institute of chartered accounts of, uh, of india icai the wording of the announcement of the finance minister and the actual terminology which is contained in the uh, in the law is always different uh, some people are asking about what it really means and I'm going to do a rapid fire round with you. Does anyone who buys or sells cryptocurrency on any platform in India now have to pay 30% on the income earned on it? Yes, you see uh, what they have said it, looking to the fact that there is a lack of transparency in these transactions. So what has been said that when you will sell this virtual digital asset, which a currency, when you're selling whatever the amount you are receiving, that will be taxed at 30 percent. But if you have a cost of acquisition for that asset, so if you can establish that you have acquired these assets at some value, that will be deducted. And on that 30 percent, you will have to pay. However, no expenditure will be allowed because people may say that I have cut expenditure on rent, salary or any other Internet, etc. So no expenditure will be allowed because there is a memorandum explaining the budget, uh, which is uh, which has clarified that this is a total amount which will be 30 percent subject to tax, and any person making any payment will be required to withhold tax at the rate of one percent. So when you are buying any, so uh, Mr. Jain, uh, Mr. Jain, so therefore, uh, in very simple terms, anyone who is an investor in any form of cryptocurrency currently in India regardless of the outcome, will bear a tax liability. Am I correct in summarizing it in that manner? Yeah, yeah, you are absolutely right, Siddharth. Absolutely. N number right. two, there was another provision which seemed to suggest that losses on this account cannot be set off. Explain that simply to us, because that is not the usual tre tax treatment for losses. See, uh, there, see, there can be a situation that you have bought a currency, say, for 100 rupees, in a digital cryptocurrency, and you have sold at 80 rupees, so you would have incurred a loss of rupees 20. In the normal circumstances, when you incur any loss, that loss is eligible to be set off against other income, particularly in the same year. So now they say that in case you incur any loss, that loss will not be allowed to be set off Mr. Jain, Mr. Jain, uh, in your experience, and I certainly think so, sir, this is very unusual. This is almost like a punitive measure. What is the message and signal being given uh, by this uh, additional clause? I believe that this is a basically the government doesn't want to encourage it. On the contrary, they want to discourage that people should not invest. And in order to, because the concern okay. of the government is... So, so if... Uh, if, if uh, Mr. Jain, I'm, I'm, I want to take this, uh, these points with you in a rapid fire manner. If the government is wanting to discourage people from investing, then why is it using tax as a blunt force instrument? Why is there no law? Even if you have to ban no. it, come out with a law. No, you see, uh, Mr. Sarah, there, there has to be two things you must keep in mind. See, digital currency is the future. You can't help it out and you cannot get out of it. Mr. Jain, you, for, for, uh, you need to regulate it. The, the future is rosy for everyone, but why should why should people live in pain in the present? Who has seen the future? Uh, I do agree, but the, as on the date, the thought process is that many people are investing in black and many people are not reporting it. So, in case they to discourage people to go all sure, out. This sure, then, then, then if you are doing a 30% at the top uh, uh, kind of rate for uh, taxing it, then why are you introducing punitive measures? Because at the same time, and I'm really confused about this, Mr. Jain, that's why I'm asking you this, and I know that there are thousands of youth who have invested in crypto all over India. You are also talking about a Sarkari currency, uh, a blockchain-based currency, if you 
kind of describe it with an adjective also a cryptocurrency now will the tax treatment of that sarkari currency also be the same or will bharat sarkar and rbi uh, say that will be taxed differently i think that will be different i think once rbi comes to the indian digital currency in indian rupee that cannot be subject to the same frankly speaking when you have a currency the currency itself currency is a medium to carry out the business so currency per se should not be chargeable to tax frankly speaking mm -hmm. if i, I no 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 no, no. mr jain mr jain uh, i don't know uh, even 1% of the tax that you know but i'll ask you a question the rupee is traded as a commodity a digital currency is traded as a commodity yes then uh, why should there be different classes of uh, taxation you just suddenly go out and announce this in two paras you throw everybody into a turmoil you have had years to come out with reasoned logical uh, uh, rational laws and regulations and tax treatment clauses i am completely befuddled as to why it is being done in this ham handed manner see is that it is basically the government concern is lack of transparency in the transaction of cryptocurrency so the assumption is that uh, there is a lack of transparency okay let's take People that point do. on lack of transparency um, uh, mr jain with mr r gopalan who is now with us former secretary of economic affairs a veteran of many budgets and uh, policy making mr gopalan before we go